We all know that flat earthers aren't the sharpest tools in the shed. But sometimes they do surprise me with an example of geometrically illiteracy that approaches the level of quantum eraser. It was Chris Curtis in his debate with MC Toon who showed how wrong you can get and how proud you can be at that achievement. The discussion at one point focuses on the curvature of the earth and Chris takes the amount of drop as a measurement. Out of the blue he comes up with this gem. Really quickly, 360 degree segments of a sphere all have equal drop around the surface of a circle. Yeah. If you're measuring in one direction, you're measuring from here to there, but there's 15,836 miles of drop to get from here to here. It took me quite some time to figure out where he got the 15,836 miles from. This would mean 15,836 divided by 363 degrees equals around 44 miles per degree drop. But how does he get that number? He talks about dividing the circle into 360 degrees and seems to add up the drop for every degree. Not by the 8 in inches per mile squared formula, because 1 degree stands for 69 miles, which would mean 38,088 inches, which is 0.6 mile. This number he mentions later on but this would result in a total drop over 360 degrees of 216 miles. But later on he also mentions this number, 3959 miles as the radius of the earth and because going around 360 degrees the drop for each 90 degrees equals the radius, so then the total drop for 360 degrees would be 4 times 3959 miles equals 15836 miles. The number he first mentioned, but he ever so happily mentions the 0.6 miles per degree, almost in the same sentence. McToon challenges him by saying this. Right, you take the whole circle, divide it into 360 why, degrees. Why not divide it up into 666 and equals because that? Because 360 degrees is what we use and that's what makes what? sense of it. We can just arbitrarily pick any degrees. old number. Flip. If instead of arbitrarily choosing 69 miles per segment, if you arbitrarily choose half a mile per segment, there's two inches of drop every half mile. Two inches right times times what multiply by 2 i get 99604 inches of drop using this weird math that you're doing right how many miles is that i will convert that to miles convert length inches to miles that is 1.57 miles of drop mctoon calculates on the fly that when you calculate the drop based on the drop per half a mile you get a 360 degree drop of only 99,604 inches, that is 1.57 miles of drop over 360 degrees. It's just about quantum erasers butchering the calculation of the drop of an airplane per second all over again. Let's show the ridiculousness of Chris's line of reasoning. If you take as a starting point 1 degree, then the total drop over 360 degrees is 260 miles. Where you take 10 degrees as a starting point, the total drop becomes 2,159 miles. At 20 degrees, 4,285 miles. 40 degrees, 8,313 miles. And at 16 degrees, it's a staggering 11,846 miles. And indeed, if you take 90 degrees, it comes out around the number Chris mentions, 15,800 miles. You see that the total drop calculated the way Chris does change drastically with, with the number of degrees you take as a starting point. By the way, you can also see that the amount of drop compared with that calculated with the 8 inches per mile squared formula 
deviates from that number up to a point where it totally misses its mark. But let me be clear, the whole drop thing to define a circle is total nonsense in the first place. Firstly, when you do a 360 degree travel along the surface of the earth, your total drop is zero inches. You end up just where you started at the very same location. Secondly, when you do a 360 degree travel along the surface of the earth, your elevation doesn't change. Drop is by flat earthers always conflated with elevation change, and it isn't. And thirdly, if you want to calculate the total drop around the 360 degree circle and you want to calculate that drop relative to the horizontal tangent at your starting position, you first would have to add up the drop in the first quadrant and that of the second quadrant. And that happens to be twice the radius of the earth, but then the direction of drop changes. Was the drop in the first two quadrants down, as it were, the drop in the second two quadrants is, as it were, up. So you get two times the radius down and two times the radius up. This calculation ends up to be zero. But don't be fooled, all of these so-called calculations are complete and utter nonsense. And why does Chris bring up this drivel in the first place? Because he wants to argue that the curvature of the earth is not defined by the sphere, but by the radius whatever that means. It is. Yes. It's not defined by the sphere. It's defined by the radius. Again, Michael, really quickly. This is what you get when someone who is completely geometrically illiterate tries to overload someone who knows how ge geometry works with quasi-mathematical solutions for a non-existent problem. That, by the way, doesn't bring him any closer to any evidence for a flat Earth anyway.